Dear student, today we will discuss about children with special needs, emotionally disturbed children. Introduction Students, do you agree that the mental health of our children is a natural and important concern for us all? Yes, the fact is many mental disorders have their beginnings in childhood or adolescence and it may go undiagnosed and untreated for years. Emotional problems contribute to serious learning and health experiments in children. In school, large number of socially and emotionally disturbed children with increasingly difficult learning and behavioral problems cause more and more concern. Some children in the classroom are mischievous, they are hyperactive or hypoactive. They have temper tantrum and display a unruly behavior and self-injurious behavior quite often. These children pose problem for the classroom teachers. Are these children emotionally disturbed? What is emotional disturbance? Emotional disturbance is an umbrella term that is used to describe be a wide range of different disorder and conditions. Anxiety disorder, conduct disorder, eating disorder, mood disorder, psychotic disorder, all other considered emotional disturbance. Yet each varies from the others in important ways. Teachers are often among the first to suspect that a student may have undiagnosed emotional disturbance. They may notice a student's ongoing problem with interpersonal relationships, for example, or signs of unreasonable anger and eating disorder or self-injurious behavior. A teacher can make a powerful difference in a student's life, especially armed with the insight and strategies that work and be a generally helpful, even life-changing. Do you have a student with emotional disturbance in your class this year? Or perhaps you have a student whose behavior or demeanor makes you wonder life and emotional disturbance is going undiagnosed? If so, please read on. Emotional disturbance can affect many different aspects of students' learning, including but not limited to number one concentration number two stamina number three handling time pressures number four handling multiple tasks number five interacting with others number six responding to a feedback number seven responding to a change and number eight remaining calm under stress a child who has social and emotional problem shows problem in learning. Conversely, if a child has some kind of learning problem because of constant failure, the child may develop emotional problems. As a result, learning problem and emotional problems are so interrelated that it is by no means easy to separate them. Lack of friends may lower one's self-esteem, which even in the absence of any actual learning problem may reduce the child's academic achievement. The child get further frustrated with parents, other children and teachers reject the child. Rejection may give a rise to serious negative emotional reactions from the child, influencing both his or her academic career and social relationships. Conflicts and complexes may develop within the child, making the entire life of the child more difficult and unhappy. Many times the teacher may pay more attention to the child problem in learning than understanding the child's emotional problem. As a result, the child's emotional problem may further increase due to lack of attention. Thus, a teacher should try to deal with both the academic and social problems adequately and effectively. Only when this happens, the child can actually be helped. Definition An emotional or behavioral disorder is a condition in which a child's behavior or emotional responses are so different from those of the generally accepted. Age-appropriate norms of children with the same ethnic or cultural background so as to result in significant impairment in social relationships, self-care, educational progress or classroom behavior. The term emotional disturbance has different meanings. Number one, for teachers an emotionally disturbed child is one who is shying, 
withdrawn or who is too aggressive emotionally disturbed behavior was considered synonymous with misbehavior or deviancy a child is emotionally disturbed when he disrupts the whole class place undue pressures on the teachers and disturbs the general school atmosphere in this definition the locus of problem is on the norms of the school number 2 emotional disturbance is also viewed in terms of environmental variables which create a maladaptive emotional reactions for example a frustrating school environment leads to emotional disturbance number 3 from the view point of the peer group a child who cannot make interpersonal adjustment with his age mates is considered as emotionally disturbed number 4 A child is emotionally disturbed when his reactions to life situation are unrewarding to himself and unacceptable to his peer and other member of the society. These children lack of flexibility to modify their behavior. They are too excited or too withdrawn to behave or too fearful. Characteristics: emotional outbursts and inappropriate responses are part of growing up and should not be treated as emotional disturbance for the individual to be demand emotionally disturbed it must be determined that the child's condition result in functional impairment subsequently interfering with one or more major life activities such as the abilities to eat bathe and dress oneself or the abilities to function effectively in social family and educational contexts Emotional disturbance is a condition exhibiting one or more of of the following characteristics over a long period of time and to make mark a degree that adversely affect a child's education performance an inability to learn that cannot be explained by intellectual sensory or health factor the student may have a specific academic skills deficits and learning difficulties that make him perform below grade level the student may have memory and thinking disorders the student may have seriously delayed social developmental including an inability to build or maintain satisfactory interpersonal relationships with peers and teachers the student may be immature with inappropriate crying temper tantrum and poor coping skills the student may show behavior or feeling that are inappropriate under normal circumstances the student may demonstrate a variety of inappropriate behavior such as laughing when others crying crying when there would be an expressions of joy and engage in general negative attention getting behavior hyperactivity short attention span impulsiveness the student has difficulty sitting still he is constantly in motions in restlessness and seems driven by an inner motor the student may show a withdrawal or general perceive a mood from unhappiness or depression he may have a long period of moodiness and depressions or evidence of excessive anxiety or fears the student may indulge in aggression or self injurious behavior being dangerous aggressive towards others self destructive severe withdrawn and non communicative and may indulge in destructive act with property and possessions the student may have a tendency to develop physical symptoms or fear associated with personal or school problems the student may have attention disorder with difficulty concentrating and remaining on task he or she rarely finish what he started frequently jump from one activity to another and is easily distracted by competing stimuli the student often act impulsively without thinking as poor planning and organizational skills responding quickly and make many errors and lack of self regulation skills the student may show symptoms of chronic anxiety problems occur when the fear and anxiety are out of proportions to the stimulus or attached to many object or lead to inappropriate behavior example include over anxious disorder and school phobia there may be a professional diagnosis for serious emotional disturbance
children with the most serious emotional disturbance may also exhibit number 1 distorted thinking number 2 excessive anxiety number 3 bizarre motor acts number 4 abnormal mood swings the phrase over a long period of time and to make mark degree is a very important part of understanding this disorder many children who do not have emotionally disturbance may display some of these some behavior at various time during their development however when children have an emotional disturbance these behavior continue over a long period of time emotionally disturbed children are often seen as unpredictable emotionally disturbed children in contrast to the normal group have no close emotional proximity with their parents causes no one knows the actual causes or causes of emotional disturbance although several factors have been suggested including one heredity number two brain disorder number three diet number four stress number five family functioning the following can be a few reasons as the why some children show a social and emotional problems number one damage to any part of the brain may cause a social problems number two repeated failures in the class number three constant scolding by the teacher number four ridicule by other children number five rejection by parents number six poor self-concept number seven lack of self-confidence in his or her abilities number eight lack of friends number nine comparison of his or her performance with other children in class and at home by teachers and parents number 10 constant fear of being unsuccessful as the child feels that he or she cannot succeed in anything number 11 punishment by teacher and parents number 12 broken homes number 13 tension at home number 14 unhappy family number 15 constant fight among parents number 16 loss of or suppression from a parent number 17 abuse at home or school number 18 neglect by teacher number 19 attention problems number 20 painful illness number 21 use of drug tobacco alcohol from a very early age 22 side effects from use of strong medicines number 23 parental depression and stress identification a teacher can identify such children by some simple measures if the child is fighting all the time or rude to his or her teacher or other children in class or shy the child may also become very nervous to often sometimes act too young for his or her age look depressed or sad or lost most of the time if the child is too stubborn or indulge in dangerous behavior like banging on self or punishing other kids also indicate the child problem in the child the child also get angry and is too undisciplined we can understand that the child is emotionally disturbed a look at specific emotional disturbance Emotional disturbance includes a number of different mental disorders. Let's take a brief look at the most common ones. While a school teacher should know about these and be able to identify them, it is the job of the specialist to deal with uh, such children. The teacher may bring it to the notice of the parent and school authorities. Conduct disorder. Conduct disorder refer to a group of behavioral and emotional problem in youngster where children have a great difficulty in following rules and behaving in a social acceptable manner. This includes the following behaviors. Number one, aggressions to people and animals. Number two, distraction of property. Number three, deceitfulness, lying or stealing. Number four, truancy or other serious violations of rules although conduct disorder is a one of the most difficult behavior disorder to treat young people often benefit from number one training for parents on how to handle the child number two family therapy number three 
training in problem solving skill for children or adolescents number 4 community based services eating disorder eating disorders are characterized by extremes in eating behavior either too much or too little or feeling of extreme distress or concern about body weight or shape or being eating a disorder characterized by eating excessively while feeling unable to control on self the most effective and long lasting treatment this is a psychotherapy with careful attention to medical and nutritional needs anxiety disorder we all experience anxiety from time to time but for some people including children anxiety can be excessive persistent seemingly uncontrollable and overwhelming an irrational fear or everyday situation may be involved several distinct disabilities share that core characteristic of irrational fear generalized anxiety disorder gad obsessive compulsive disorder ocd panic disorder post traumatic stress disorder ptsd social anxiety disorder also called social phobia and specific phobias are some of the more common anxiety disorders post traumatic stress disorder ptsd this is a severe condition that may develop after a person is exposed to a one or more traumatic events such as sexual assault serious injury or the threat of death or death of parent most people who experience a traumatizing event will not develop ptsd however when the symptoms such as disturbing recurring flashbacks avoidance or numbing of memories of the event and hyper arousal high level of anxiety continue for a more than a month after traumatic event it may be a consider an emotional disorder phobia a phobia is a type of anxiety disorder usually defined as a persistent irrational fear of an object or situation which one tries to avoid when the person cannot avoid the phobia there will be a with marked distress and significant interference in social occupational activities social phobia it is a natural to feel self conscious nervous or shy in front of others at times anyone can have a racing heart sweating palms or fluttering stomach when giving a class presentation most people manage to get through these moments but for some the anxiety is extreme and unbearable that they might feel too nervous to give a answer in class be unable to make eye contact with classmates in the hallway or avoid a catching with others at the lunch table when people feel so self conscious and anxious that prevents them for socializing most of time it may be an anxiety condition called social phobia where extreme feeling of shyness and self consciousness build into a powerful fear people with social phobia can usually interact easily with family and few close friends but meeting new people talking in a group or speaking in a public can cause their extreme shyness with social phobia a person's extreme shyness self consciousness and fear of embarrassment get the way of life instead of enjoying social activities people with social phobia might deride them and avoid some of the altogether obsessive compulsive disorder often referred to as ocd obsessive compulsive disorder is actually considered an anxiety disorder ocd is characterized by recurrent unwanted thoughts obsessions and or repetitive behavior compulsions repetitive behaviors and washing counting checking or cleaning are often performed with the hope of preventing obsessive thoughts or making them go away performing these so called rituals however provides only temporary relief and not performing them markedly increasing anxiety treatment for most people with ocd should include one or more of the following cognitive behavior therapy cbt and medication usually antidepressant bipolar disorder 
also known as manic depressive illness. Bipolar disorder is a serious medical condition that causes dramatic mood swings from overly high and or irritable and sad and hopelessness and then back again often with periods of normal mood in between. Severe changes in energy and behavior go along with these changes in mood. Most people with bipolar disorder get stabilized over time through proper treatment. Psychotic disorder. Psychotic disorder is used to refer to several mental disorders that cause abnormal thinking and perceptions. Two of the main symptoms are delusions and hallucinations. Delusions are false beliefs, such as thinking that someone is plotting against you. Hallucinations are false perception, such as hearing, seeing or feeling something that is not there. Schizophrenia is one type of psychotic disorder. There are others also well. Expert treatment is called for in all cases. What can a teacher do? It is likely that you may have a student or two with an emotional disturbance in your classroom. How can you best help them? Support their learning and encouraging their well-being. Learn more about students' specific mental health disturbance. A mood disorder such as depression will affect a student's demeanors, thinking, learning and behavior differently than an eating disorder like anorexia or bulimia. Knowing how the particular emotional disturbance manifests itself and it manage can help to support the child. Learn more about the student's strengths. The students bring much more than an emotional disturbance to class. What about his or her strengths, skills, talent and personal interests? All of these are tools in your hands to create opportunities for success. Providing encouragement and support. One of the most important aspects of good teaching of a child with social and emotional problem is establishment of a positive relationship between the teacher and the child. A teacher can provide a support by focusing on the child's action and strengths rather than pointing only towards their mistakes, misbehavior and weaknesses. Set reasonable goals. When a student reaches goals that require considerable effort, self-worth is improved, children feel good about themselves when they worked hard to achieve a worthwhile goal. As these children have a problem in learning, the goal set from the, them should be equal to their level of performance. As these children have problem in learning, the goal set for them should be equal to their level of performance. For example, if a child is not able to write long answer, as he or she is shy or withdrawn, he or she may be asked to give a short answer or answer orally. Give a responsibility. Children with emotional problem feel happy when the teacher thinks they are capable of accepting responsibilities. Giving student responsibility demonstrates a level of trust in their ability to act maturely. Promote sociability. The teacher can pair children with social and emotional problems with those children who have good leadership or friend making skills. She can also develop some social group activities or games that require teamwork so that the paired children share positive and pleasant experiences. Use book or drama therapy. This is a teaching technique that use reading a materials to help students understanding themselves and their problems better. Characters in the book or drama learn to cope with problems and situations similar to those the students face. Through identifying with the characters, student releases emotion, tensions and achieve a better understanding of themselves and their problems. Use rewards judiciously. The most common way by which behavior can be improved is by the use of rewards. It would help strengthen the desired behavior. A reward can also be a word or a sentence. For example, today Shama has done her work very well, which will make the child happy about his or her behavior.
Price is one of the most effective way for teachers in managing student behavior, but it should be a given immediately after the desired behavior occurs. It should be ensured that the child does not get used to the rewards. A reward for the child is something that he or she like or feel good about. It is not always something which a teacher thinks the child should like. Remember, they are kids first. By and large students with emotional disturbance are not scary, dangerous or time bombs waiting to go off. They are themselves in need of your skills and support and quite capable of learning. Do not permit bullying, teasing, demeaning or exclusions for the student by other students or by the system. Support the student inclusion. You can support the student with emotional disturbance in subtle but meaningful ways, especially during group work, cooperative learning activities, peer interactions and team projects. There may also be time to let students work alone or take a break. Set clear behavioral rules and expectations for entire class. Students with emotional disturbance are frequently the targets rather than the initiators of other students' misbehaviors. Having explicit classroom practices and procedures providing a solid structure by which both teacher and student can deal with inappropriate behavior, understand consequences and develop a shared approach to behavior in class and towards one another. Communicate with the student's parents. Parents are a great source of information about their own children. They are like to have an, a multitude of suggestions for what would benefit their children in school. They can also keep you informed as to event and development in the child's life, new medications or treatments and how these might affect the student in school. Emotional disturbance in children is very disturbing. As a teacher, there is a much one can do address the special needs associated with students, emotional or behavioral difficulty by providing the necessary support. Dispelling the sigma associated with mental health problems and facilitating the student's learning and success. Conclusion Dear students, we have seen how the mental health of our children is an unnatural and why it is an important concern for us all. As teacher, we meet different children and large number of socially and emotionally disturbed children with increasingly difficulty learning and behavior problems. We have understood that emotional disturbance is a term that is used to describe a wide range of disorder and conditions. Teachers are often among the first to suspect the student may have an undiagnosed emotional disturbance as it can affect many different aspects of student learning. We have also learned few points to identify emotionally disturbed kids. We have understood the relationship between emotional problems and learning. Emotional outbursts or inappropriate responses are part of growing up and should not be treated as emotional disturbance. We have also discussed in detail about a number of different mental disorders such as conduct disorder, eating disorder, anxiety disorder including generalized anxiety disorder, GID, obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, panic disorder, post traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, social phobia and specific phobia, bipolar disorder and psychotic disorder. As a teacher, there is a much one can do to help students with emotional or behavioral difficulties by providing the necessary support for their learning and success. Thank you.